students today we will continue the life process as we are continuing the digestion process and digestion in human being so digestion in human being and this is today we are going to discuss digestion in stomach so stomach already i told in the last class that stomach has a wall and this stomach wall is having gastric glands and these gastric glands produce gastric juice now this gastric juice contain components like hydrochloric acid pepsin enzyme mucus and one more enzyme is there renin okay. now hcl what is the function of this hydrochloric acid obviously it provides acidic medium to the stomach and it activates this pepsin pepsin first it was secreted in inactive form and then when it comes in contact with hcl it becomes activated now when it becomes active what function it does proteins whatever proteins in our diet we take that proteins are partially digested and peptones and proteases these two intermediate compounds are formed and that happens at ph 1 0.8 so it is highly acidic ph 1.8 is highly acidic similarly this mucus now as because it is highly acid medium so wall is also made up of protein stomach wall you know the our body has lots of proteins and our body is nothing but different types of proteins only make our body so this mucus protects the lining of stomach from the action of these pepsin and this hcl because they may digest our wall of stomach okay so this mucus has a layer that protects the inner lining of stomach otherwise stomach is actually uh, helps in churning of food okay whatever food that goes that churns inside that and churning helps in mixing up of this hcl pepsin etc Now, renin. What is the function of renin? This is an enzyme which is particularly digesting milk protein. Okay, now milk protein is called as casein, and that casein is digested by this renin. So this is the stomach where carbohydrate digestion is not there. In stomach only protein digestion is there, and very little uh, fat digestion is also there. Okay, now come to this next part that is small intestine. Now small intestine. has the part duodenum okay first part is duodenum and even but this duodenum is alkaline medium and in between the stomach and the duodenum there is a sphincter muscle okay that regulates the passage of food now liver this is the largest gland liver is present and liver produce bile juice and bile juice contain bile salts and bile pigments and these bile helps in emulsification of fat now what is emulsification of fat that is breaking down of big big drops that is into small globules of fat okay because fat is a very complex thing so this fat has to be broken down into simple globules of fat so that enzymes can act on it properly now this once the liver emulsify the fat then the pancreas produce the juice pancreatic juice which juice comes through the uh, ducts that is pancreatic duct to the site of duodenum and these pancreatic juice contain three things pancreatic amylase trypsin and pancreatic lipase now here most of the digestion occur in the small intestine or pan part that is duodenum part so pancreatic amylase from the name only it is very clear if it is amylase you know as we have discussed in salivary amylase these amylase also digest starch into maltose and trypsin what it does it this trypsin act on this peptones and proteases and convert that into dipeptides okay and then lipase what it does lipase acts on these emulsified fat which is already emulsification is done by the liver this emulsified fat is digested by this lipase and then it is converted into fatty acids and glycerol so maximum digestion where it occurs that is in your duodenum part so this is digestion 
uh, that is, uh, you have to refer his things from, if you see in the reference book, you will get it in detail. But few facts that I told you. So now, if you write, uh, that is your uh, trypsin. What is the function of trypsin? And what is the function of this and pancreatic MIS? So, if you write here, pancreatic MIS. Now, what it does? It does this 70% starch because you know the 30% starch is already digested and 70% starch is converted into that is your maltose plus other things are also there. Similarly, trypsin. This is also secreted by so it peptones so what are the intermediate compounds coming from stomach peptones plus proteoses and that is converted into bi peptides so this is the component that we get when trypsin acts and remember all in ph what is the ph here somewhere 8.6 that is highly alkaline medium this happens Earlier we have seen in stomach, that was in acidic medium, and this is in alkaline medium. Similarly, another one is lipase, is there, pancreatic lipase, and this converted into this emulsified fat. Emulsified fat into fatty acids and glycerol. Fatty acids and glycerol. So this is the component. But now still we have not got the ultimate things that is maltose is there but we haven't got glucose. Dipeptides are there but we haven't got amino acid because that is the ultimate product that are going to form. So let's now come to the, the same duodenum part. The same duodenum. But same duodenum. What happens? Wall of intestine. That is wall of intestine. And wall of intestine produce what? One special juice called intestinal juice. And this juice, what it does? This intestinal juice has number of enzymes. Number of enzymes it has. If it is maltose is the product, then this maltose is converted into glucose and that is by the enzyme called maltase. So that happens. If lactose is the product, lactose is present in the, in like um, it is present in the milk. It's a milk protein. Okay. See, it's not milk the protein, it's a sugar that is present in milk. The milk is also converted into glucose but that time the enzyme will be lactase so in this way many different kinds of uh, substances are converted into the ultimate product that is glucose and now another one is that we have formed is dipeptides and these dipeptides are converted into what is that ultimate amino acid amino acid so these and already you have got fatty acids and glycerol so glucose amino acids and then along with that we have already got fatty acids and glycerol so these are the ultimate product these are the ultimate product which are going to soluble in blood that means next after digestion uh, once the duodenum part is over now you will come to the small intestine next part that is colon after duodenum it is colon that is the large intestine part after duodenum it will come here what is that ileum then jejunum so that is not required now we will talk about ileum part now what happens this ileum has villi this ileum has villi that means many this type of finger like projections are there and these finger like projections they have a lot of richly supplied with blood capillaries and they also have one special uh, things that is called lactyl okay and this lactyl only absorbs this fat fatty acids and glycerols are absorbed by this lactyl and this is a lymph containing i will discuss lymph in the next but these finger like projections they helps in this really helps in absorption 
basically helps in absorption of that digested product. So these villi are present in the ileum. Okay, that is very very important thing. Now when this villi takes absorb the food, that is what the food glucose, amino acids, fatty acids, glycerol, these all are absorbed by this villi, and each one is called villus. Now they from here the blood will take them to cells. So this is absorption. But the blood will take them to cells that is called your assimilation. When it reaches the cell, it is used up in the process of respiration and that is called assimilation. We assimilated the digested food. Now there is one more uh, thing that we will get after ileum and uh, that is a large intestine, isn't it? A large intestine has again the parts like Large intestine, what are the parts that they have? It is cecum, then it is colon, and then it is rectum. Okay, so this cecum has this appendix, you know, vermiform appendix, and this appendix is non functional, they don't have any role in us. So it is a vestigial organ. Appendix is a vestigial organ, but remember, when this appendix get infected, then lots of problems occur. And this colon. This entire colon is actually meant for water absorption. Water absorption, whatever water we are drinking that is absorbed by this colon. And this rectum that is the store the waste. Waste and then that will come out through anus. And anus has got anal sphincter. Anus has got anal sphincter muscle. And this anal sphincter then move through this anus, all the waste, fecal matter move through this anus and anus is controlled by anal sphincter because I already told you that sphincter is the muscle sphincter is the muscle that helps in uh, regulation of re regulation of passage of food okay, so anal sphincter is there everywhere from organ to organ you will get the sphincter muscle okay so this is this completes the digestion process. So as we have, uh, you have to write um, point wise. Okay, like uh, in uh, salivary amylase function that already we have uh, discussed in the last class. Then all stomach, whatever the components are there, in the gastric juice, their functions we have to write. And then similarly, small intestine, duodenum, what functions are going there we have to write. So this is the way how the entire digestive system acts okay and there are certain facts like whose small intestine is uh, bigger whether herbivores or carnivores so if you take a cow a cow is a herbivore and it has to digest what cellulose right it has to digest cellulose and this cellulose need a long small intestine okay because long small intestine is there in the cow but whereas in case of tiger, you will get a shorter, shorter small intestine because meat is easier to digest. Meat is quite easier to digest. Yeah. So there are many facts that we, are dis we will discuss in our coming class uh, about the digestion. So whatever the doubts you have, you just ask me in your online class. Thank you.